So, Star vs. the Force of Evil ends in just a few weeks now. As in, a few weeks from now, it's over. Forever. And while the final season so far has had some low points to it, some of the lowest points since the first season of the show, which I think was one of the most hit and miss seasons of a great show ever, I'm still gonna be super bummed out when the end does come. Star is just one of those shows where, even when I wasn't really enjoying it, as much as I thought I probably should be, I still really enjoyed the ride. And as I have pointed out many a time, even at its low points, it still has some great things going for it. I've made comparisons between Star and She-Ra and the Princesses of Power, for example, and while I think the pacing of the latter show is probably better overall, and while its animation certainly isn't bad, I think Star has some of the best animation of any modern cartoon ever, possibly any cartoon ever. Like, right up there even with the old Chuck Jones cartoons. Like, like, seriously, I'm not exaggerating this at all. I love the animation on this show. And you know what? The story and the lore aren't half bad either. Like, I think Steven Universe still does it better. I was, after all, so hooked on the lore of that show that I have a near encyclopedic knowledge of all of its lore now. Which I can't also say for Star Versus, but it is really enjoyable, and it's not as if there isn't anything about the show that gets me thinking. And yet, despite that, I would not have thought to make the video that was suggested to me by Patreon sponsor Nico Schmiko, who I just have to say I haven't interacted with her a lot, but she seems like a really sweet person, and I'm super glad that she got in touch with me. Basically, what Nico Schmiko wanted me to address is whether or not it's possible that Toffee is still alive. We've had some great villains in Star Versus, but Toffee is still, I think, the best that we've ever had. Even Meteora, who was pretty great, became a giant monster to be beaten down by the end of her time as main villain on the show, and it wasn't even really expanded upon much her role as main villain. It was kind of simplistic, especially compared to Toffee's. The idea that he could still be kicking around is definitely an interesting one, and the points put forth by Nico Shmiko, which suggests that he might still be alive, are compelling. So I'm going to go over them for you guys real quick right now, and then I'm going to expand upon them with some ideas of my own, which I think might actually support the idea. First of all, we need to talk about Toffee in general. What exactly is he? I believe it's pronounced Septarian. Is that, is that right? I'm sure one of you guys will <laughs> correct me if it's not, but that's the species of monster that Toffee is. And he's not the only Septarian that we see in the series, either. Another relatively prominent Septarian is Rastacor, an ally to Meteora before she got babyfied. And it's actually Rastacor which gives us our best look at the capabilities of this particular monster type. Septarians are kind of like the lizard from Spider-Man. They effectively take the reptilian ability to regenerate certain limbs up to 11. At least the first time that I recall, at least, that we see a clear demonstration of the Septarian ability to regenerate is when we see a Septarian regenerate his arm. Also, just out of curiosity, is that Rastacor? It looks like Rastacor, but I keep forgetting to go back and check if that's actually supposed to be him. Let me know in the comment section down below. This is, of course, right before we see that regeneration ability defeated by the spell without a name, as cast by Moon the Undaunted. But already, it's a pretty impressive feat. The ability to regenerate an arm that quickly, you don't see that outside of something like Dragon Ball Z with Piccolo. Like, I, I referenced the Spider-Man villain, the Lizard, earlier. I don't even think he can regenerate his limbs that fast. But thanks to some stuff that we see later with Rastacor, it becomes clear that Septarians are far more powerful than that scene would lead us to believe. Rastacor was reduced to an arm, and yet he was able to regenerate fully, and even retain his memories and personality after he did. Granted, it took him a while to do so, but he still did it, which is just crazy. That would suggest that a Septarian's brain isn't just limited to its head, that it actually, like, spreads out through its whole body, which is kind of creepy now that I think about it. Otherwise, how could he possibly have gotten his memories back? Not only does this paint a really interesting picture of just how powerful the spell without a name actually is, if it's able to completely counteract such an insane ability, but 
It also gives us a pretty clear idea of what Toffee did to make himself nigh indestructible after he came back to life after having been inside the wand for a while. It seems that whatever process he put in motion, which also corrupted magic and prevented people from using it, at least for a while, also served to make that corrupted magic part of him, an extension of him, or vice versa, making him an extension of it. Greatly enhancing that natural ability to regenerate. That, for example, if the same process was undergone by somebody without that regenerative ability, they might not be able to regenerate the way that Toffee could after the process is completed. And while we never get to see if the spell without a name still could have prevented him from regenerating in that form, as by then he had corrupted magic to the point that it couldn't be cast anymore, at least that's what I read into the situation. It doesn't seem like anything at all could have killed him except perhaps that spell. And he certainly shouldn't have been destroyed by a simple magic blast plus falling pillar. It just doesn't make sense. Now, it's possible that Star's particular butterfly transformation is a little different than other ones. It's all golden, first of all, which seems to tie her to the rebirth of magic itself. Maybe having such pure magic at her fingertips allowed her to wash away the impure magic that Toffee had infused within himself to make himself so much more resilient. Kind of like how the restored golden waters from the magic fountain washed away the corrupted waters in this scene here. And that that's how she was able to destroy him, that she just removed that enhanced regenerative ability from him when she hit him with that spell. But man, that's like the most speculative of speculation. And even then, I still would have expected him to be able to regenerate. I would have just expected it to take a really long time. Like, he was all goopy or whatever, but it definitely seems like there were some pieces hanging around there after that pillar fell that were comparable in size to Rastacor's arm. Point is, unless there is something that the show didn't either show us or tell us about the way that Star's magic that she used on him in that scene actually works, he shouldn't be dead right now. And so, I think it's possible that he's not. Like, I don't think at this point that they're going to bring him back into the show. It seems a little late in the game for something like that to happen. But if they did, I wouldn't be surprised. The best evidence we have to support the idea that however it happened, Toffee is actually dead is the fact that Eclipsa was freed from the crystal via the effects of the pact that she made with Moon. If Toffee weren't dead, she shouldn't have been freed. It's that simple. And yet dead can mean many different things. Maybe being temporarily dead, as Rastacor also pretty clearly was for a while before the rest of his body regenerated from his arm, would be enough to complete that pact. Maybe we are going to see the return of Toffee before the show is over, or in the uh, sequel comic that we are inevitably going to get because every show seems to get one nowadays. Maybe that's been part of the plan all along. And I think we even saw evidence that this might be the case in a recent episode of the show, the one about the spell without a name. While you can certainly read the spell's behavior as exactly what we're told it is, that it's attempting to evade recapture. You can also view it as the spell attempting to escape the spell dimension, as if it's seeking out a target. And the last time we saw that spell cast, it was very clearly aimed at Toffee. I mentioned that Moon tried to use the spell on him again, this time to kill him dead permanently with it, rather than just blast off one of his fingers. But that because of the corruption to magic, it didn't go off. Now that magic is restored, Maybe the spell without a name is trying to carry out the will of the last person who cast it. Maybe it's seeking out Toffee. Maybe it can sense that Toffee still exists in some form and is trying to find and finally destroy him. After all, at the end of that episode, we did linger on that spell in such a way that it does seem as if it still has some role to play in the series. Unless they were just setting up that it'll be used to defeat Mina, I can't think of what other purpose it could have at this point, except to kill something like Toffee that's so hard to make dead. So yeah, Nico Shmiko, I'm on board with this. I think Toffee very well could be alive 
In fact, I'd go so far as to say that if he is dead, then depending on what exactly we were supposed to take away from the scene where he died, it might be a plot hole that he is. At the end of the day though, as per usual, I'd like to know, what do you guys think of this theory? Could we see Star vs. Greatest Villain make a surprise return? Or should this theory have died before it even had a chance to live? Let's get a discussion going in the comment section down below or over my Discord, link in the description, and while you're down there in the description box, I'd like to ask, if you have the time, please take the time to check out my Patreon. I still haven't updated the actual description of the tiers yet, but I am at this point effectively taking requests, regardless of which tier you pledge to. So if you have an idea that you'd like to see me talk about, like this one, definitely consider becoming a patron. I also have a link to coffee down there as well, if you'd like to make a one-time donation. So. At this point, if you like the content I create and want to have a hand in creating it, there's multiple ways to do that. Either way though, this has been AJ22, and I will talk to you guys later.